Now, back in the 1500s, the early reformers, and I'm thinking here of men like Martin Luther, John Calvin, Zwingli in England, Thomas Cramner, these men recognized that there were two pillars of the Protestant Reformation. There were two chief doctrines that they taught, and if they were true, then the entire Protestant Reformation was justified. But if they were wrong on these two points, the Protestant Reformation would fail. The Catholic Church would be the winner, that the Catholic Church would be teaching the true gospel. These two points, these two doctrines were, on one hand, sola scriptura, scripture alone. We've covered that in a previous NSTI lesson. And the second one was sola fide, faith alone. We are justified by faith alone. We are saved by faith alone. And it was really this second doctrine, sola fide, that captured the hearts of lay people all over Europe. When they heard that they were justified by faith alone, no works, no actions, no good deeds, just believe in Christ, this really excited people. Now, I remember being a young man and learning this, having people teach us that just believe in Jesus and don't worry about anything else. You fully trust in Christ and it doesn't matter how much you sin, if it's a mortal sin or a venial sin, you know, don't worry about penances or fasting or indulgences. Don't worry about any of that. Just believe. Your faith alone in Jesus is enough. Faith alone. And that word alone gave us great comfort. However, as I lived this, I realized that there's oftentimes guilt. You know, we kind of had the sense that we needed to go to confession. But as I studied church history, to my horror, I learned that Martin Luther, the Protestant reformer, had corrupted the Bible, had added a word to change the meaning of St. Paul's word in Romans chapter 3, verse 28. We're going to take a look at that right now. It reads like this, quote, For we hold that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law, end quote. Now that's how it reads straight out of the Greek into the English. But here is how Martin Luther translated it from the Greek into his German. Quote, For we hold that a man is justified by faith alone, apart from works of the law. End quote. Now you can see there's quite a big difference between the first version and the second version, which is Martin Luther. So Martin Luther is printing and distributing Bibles all over Germany, and people are reading the Bible for the first time. And they're reading it, and they're like, wow, right here in Romans chapter 3, it says that we are justified by faith alone. It's right here in the Bible. But the trick is, that's not what the Bible really said. It's something that Martin Luther added. And just as a side note here, people often say, the Catholic Church was against printing Bibles. The Catholic Church was against vernacular translations. Well, one of the reasons why the Catholic Church at this time was against vernacular translations is because of Martin Luther's Bible. He's adding his own theology He's taking his own terminology and he's inserting it into the sacred text. That's just wrong. I remember, I remember when I learned that as a Protestant, I was horrified. I couldn't believe that my hero, Martin Luther, had corrupted the Bible so that his theology would fit there in Romans. To make matters worse, I learned that Martin Luther wanted to reject the book of James. And this brings us to step two. All right, so first step is explain to your Protestant friend, your Protestant loved one, say, you know, that teaching that started the whole Reformation, justification by faith alone, it's nowhere in the Bible, nowhere does it say we're justified by faith alone. And Martin Luther himself, the guy who got the whole Reformation started, he added that word into his version of the Bible. No wonder people believed it. But now we know better. We know that he corrupted it. Now we move into step two, and step two is to bring your Protestant friend or your loved one into James chapter two. James chapter two is another teaching in the New Testament about the doctrine of justification. And here it explicitly says that we are not justified by faith alone. You can even point out to your friend or your family member, 
Hey, you know, the word faith and the word alone appear nowhere in the Bible except for one place. And that's in James chapter 2. And in James chapter 2, it says we are not, N-O-T, we are not justified by faith alone. Let's take a look at that verse right now. Quote, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered his son Isaac upon the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by works. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. End quote. There it is. We are not justified by faith alone. Now, what did Martin Luther have to say about this? Well, Martin Luther wrote that we should throw Jimmy, that is James, this book, James, into the fire. Martin Luther wanted to reject this book out of the Bible because it explicitly rejected his pet belief of justification by faith alone. So what did Martin Luther do? He invented a doctrine. We are justified by faith alone. All the people loved to hear it. Yeah, all I have to do is believe. I don't have to do anything. It wasn't in the Bible, so he added it into Romans chapter 3, verse 28. And then the one place where it rejects his doctrine, he wanted to remove that entire book out of the Bible. So that's how Martin Luther did theology. He added where it wasn't there, and he subtracted where it was affirmed. I don't think any Protestant of goodwill who loves Christ, who's trying to do God's will, is going to hear that, see that, and say, yeah, that's, that's right, we should all do that. We should add things in the Bible and take things out of the Bible. No. And I would also add here that 99% of Protestants out there in the world do not know this at all. It's never talked about. I was Protestant for a long time. I never knew this. Anytime I bring it up to Protestants, they're always shocked. Like, that can't be true. The Catholics make that up. We didn't make it up. It's all there in the record. Okay. So those are the first two steps. First, Romans 3.28, Martin Luther added it. James 2, Martin Luther wanted to subtract it, where it says we are not justified by faith alone. And then the third element is to properly explain the Catholic teaching of justification to your Protestant friend or family member. A lot of them think that we believe that you just sort of grind it out in life and you just have to do a lot of works. And when you die, you go up to St. Peter's and he has a list and you have to somehow impress Peter. You have to impress Jesus about all these great things that you did in your life. And somehow if it all weighs out, you get to go to heaven. And if it doesn't kind of, you have to, you know, really grind it out in purgatory some more. Or if you didn't make the cut, you're going to go to hell. That is not, I repeat, that is not the Catholic teaching. We don't believe in justification by works alone. See, Protestants kind of think of there's justification by faith alone, what we believe, and then there's justification by works alone, what those Catholics believe. There is a middle ground. It's the ground that's taught by St. Paul himself when he says that we are justified by faith working through love. It's also what we find here in James chapter 2, faith and works. I want to read a key verse in that James passage and, and really explore it with you. Let's take a look at it. Quote, this is in verse... Uh, 22 of James 2. You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by works, end quote. So our faith is there, but our faith is not static. Our faith is dynamic. Our faith can be small, as Jesus says, or our faith can be big. It can grow. How does our faith go from being small to being big? How do we grow in our faith? It says right here in James, our faith is completed by works. Whenever we do something out of love, out of faith for God, that grows our faith. So if we serve the poor, our faith grows. If we teach the gospel, if we teach catechism, that grows our faith. If we do anything for the church or for our fellow man as an act of faith to Christ, it grows our faith. Our faith continues to grow. Look at the apostles. Early on, they had this tiny faith. You know, Christ always says, ye of little faith. But by the time we see them in Acts, they're doing mighty deeds. Why? Because their faith grew. How did their faith grow? It grew by the activity that they were doing through Christ and in Christ. So we as Catholics believe that we are incorporated into Jesus. We have faith in Jesus. 
And then we don't just give up on faith and start doing a bunch of works. No, we want our faith to continue to grow, you know, 30 times, 60 times, 100 fold and become bigger and bigger and bigger. And how's that happen? Works, as it says in James, complete our faith. So there it is. Three steps. Look at Romans, look at James, and then explain the authentic, true Catholic teaching. Hope that helps in your Catholic apologetics. Thanks again for being part of the New St. Thomas Institute. We'll see you in the next lesson.